Are you curious? Are you curious? Well, now you're all curious, aren't you? That's the funny thing about curiosity. The more you talk about it, the more of it there is. And curiosity matters. You all know that. It matters for a whole lot of reasons. I mean, it makes us creative, and creativity is good. It makes us open-minded. Open-mindedness is good. But most of all, we think curiosity matters because it makes life interesting. And that makes us engaged. I'm Richard, and this is Anetta. And we're just a couple of undergraduates, but we've got something we'd really like to share with you about what we think it takes to have curiosity at university. At university, some place where you might think if there's anywhere you're going to find curiosity, it'd be there. You know, this paradise of learning where people, the best time of our lives, exploring ideas. Well, what if I were to tell you that when I go looking for curiosity at university, a lot of the time what I see is this. <laughs> My clicker. <clears throat> oh. So, I went to university not to what explore ideas. What's all this curiosity stuff about? Um, I needed to get a degree, right? Everyone needs a degree these days to get a job. And in my case, I got two. So I went to class every day, uh, you know, doing my assignments, doing my homework, read through my textbook, sat my exams. And, you know, every day, it was just day-to-day -day stuff, right? I, I go to class, you know, at the beginning of the semester, you'd have a whole lot of people. And then later on, you get less and less people. <laughs> That's very common. At tutorials, you sit there waiting for people to ask questions, the tutor's asking, you know, waiting for you to ask questions, um, but people are more interested in the clock because they're waiting to get back to, you know, Facebook or something to socialize with real people. <laughs> so, somewhere down the line, I discovered Ted. And here is one of my Ted heroes, um, Sir Ken Robinson. I think a lot of you probably might know him. Uh, he did this awesome talk called uh, Schools Killing Creativity. And just to recap, one of the key stories that he talks about is uh, about a girl who really was meant to be a dancer, but she was almost about to be treated, by, um, treated for ADHD just because she was doing not so well at school. But then, you know, the psychologist came in and said, hey, look, look at her. She's dancing in a room with music. She's a dancer. Get her, make her do that. Now, my point is, if schools kill creativity because they're pushing students through this funnel of, you know, systems and, you know, testing and whatever, it seems like university must be doing something sort of similar but with curiosity. Because what I've noticed was that when students go to university, do courses, do classes just for the sake of getting a degree, you sort of start losing and forgetting about curiosity. Thank you. What's well, interesting. Um, is that when, you know, when I, or a lot of us enlightened Westerners, hear someone like Aneta tell this kind of story, we have one simple reaction, and it goes something like, like this. You shouldn't be going to university just to get a job, just for the money. You should go and do what you're interested in. Follow your passion. And if society is putting all this pressure on you so that you can't do that, then that's society's problem, and we need to give you more choice. And Netta drew all these slides, by the way. She's amazing. <laughs> so hold on a second. I don't think it's that simple. And the reason I don't think it's that simple is because I found myself in a very similar situation to Netta, but I had all the choice in the world. I was exactly the kind of fortunate student who didn't have to uh, work to study at university, and I got, what it, I got good enough grades to study whatever I wanted to do. When I, when I left school at 18 years old, I had no clue what I wanted to study. I did well at physics, and they gave me a scholarship for that, so I was like, whatever. And then I found myself <laughs> drifting between lecture halls, forcing myself to memorize these equations that I didn't see the point in. And I kept thinking, gee, I should change my major, but I don't, want to, don't know what to change it to. And maybe some of you will relate to me saying that I felt like I was interested in everything, but nothing really grabbed me, nothing really piqued my curiosity. So one of my favorite TED Talks is by Barry Schwartz. He talks about the paradox of choice. You know, when you go shopping for jeans, and there's 500 jeans for sale, 
and you're like, I don't know what pair to choose, and you get paralyzed by indecision. Worst of all, whatever pair you do end up picking is going to leave you unsatisfied because you keep thinking, man, the button fell off, I could have got that other one, I'm sure that would have been better. And other times, you may not even need it, right? So I think exactly this paradox of choice is facing students who have freedom to choose what they want to do at university today. You know, we leave school at 18 years old in this hyper-complex world, and we have to pick from sometimes 120 different specialized degrees that will determine what we do for the next three, four, sometimes the rest of our life. I think it's no wonder that students like me find ourselves drifting, unengaged, thinking the grass will be greener on the other side, and we're not curious about what we're actually doing. Now, this is strange, because on the one hand, you've got Annetta, and we're saying she needs more choice to be engaged with university. On the other hand, there's me, and I'm saying it's almost like I've got too much choice, or something like that. The idea we'd like to present to you today is that if the problem is a lack of curiosity, then the answer isn't about more choice or less choice or something like that, but actually something completely different, something totally out of this spectrum. So, <clears throat> last year in my third year at university, I discovered this course called Unraveling Complexity at ANU. Um, it's a completely new course, and it hits on something that's very interesting. They do cross-disciplinary inquiry. And I really want to highlight this point, because cross, being cross-disciplinary is a pretty new thing, um, and it, you know, a lot of people don't quite get it just yet. Now, being cross-disciplinary is really special, because you get a chance to talk with other people. Um, this course brought together a whole lot of students from all over the campus, um, from all different disciplinary backgrounds, and you got a chance to actually talk with them and figure out that the world is much bigger than just your average little world. It was the first time I was actually able to reflect on what I was doing at university, um, how accounting or, or my Chinese studies actually fit into the bigger picture. Now, I can imagine you're all thinking, oh, geez, you know, cross-disciplinary, uh, such a buzzword and stuff like that. But that's not really what I'm getting at. I mean, okay, it is a buzzword. You know, it's great, it's great. I mean, you've got teamwork, you've got breadth versus depth and all that. You know, you know all of that, right? But I want to harp on something a little bit more personal than that. Um, being cross-disciplinary can catalyze our curiosity by taking us out of our little fishbowls of our individual lives, our individual little disciplines, and chuck us in a much bigger, brighter, and more diverse context. Now, while Annetta was doing this really interesting course at ANU, I was also doing something really cool, but it wasn't in Australia at all. I was on exchange at the National University of Singapore, and there I was part of this really exciting program called USP, the University Scholars Program. That was cross-disciplinary, and that was great, but it wasn't the courses, as awesome as they were, that made it so special. The best thing about it was the cross-disciplinary community and the discussions we had. And the reason is this. Imagine you, you, say you're really specialized in your field, and you're in a room with a whole other bunch of, a bunch of people from the same field with similar specializations. And one guy's like, well, I think blah, 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 blah. And then the other guy is thinking, hey, uh, that's not right. I know better than him, but he doesn't want to speak up. He doesn't want to hurt that guy's ego. And then you're like, oh, I better correct him. And then everyone just gets into this huge argument because they feel they have to justify their positions against each other. Now, the difference is, when I'm the one physicist in a discussion with a philosopher, an economist, anthropologist, then none of us expects the other guys to agree with us at all. If I say something, the other guys are like, yeah, well, he's you know, one of them crazy guys that does maths and stuff. <laughs> and, then, and everybody starts to listen a bit more. Everyone feels they've got something unique to contribute. Rather than looking for differences, when everyone starts off different, we start looking for similarities. And that makes everyone listen more, respect each other more, and in a nutshell, be more open-minded. And as we know, open-mindedness is a catalyst for curiosity. So, I'm still back here in Australia, um, and I hear all this crazy stuff happening in Singapore, um, and it sounds really fascinating. But it seems like something at ANU isn't quite hitting that point, is it? Um, you know, we've got these really, really cool courses, and they're doing great. Um, well, the, the Unraveling Complexity course that I was doing was really, really, really fascinating. Um, got us to talk with a whole lot of people, and yeah, it, it catalyzed my curiosity. But what I realized was the moment we leave the classroom, people sort of just go back into their own busy little lives again. You know, that's great and all, but you know, come on. <laughs> you know, let's keep that, keep that sort of 
intensity and that buzz of life, right? But, you know, it's still a little bit weird because, you know, when you go out of the classroom, you know, all buzzing with ideas, you still feel a little bit weird just going up to someone random and going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I learned this really interesting thing because, hey, you know, people sort of look at you funny. <laughs> So why is it that we can't just go out and do that? You know, why, why does curiosity have to end at, you know, at the end of the class, right? And that's because, yeah, it's a little bit stigmatized, right? Being intellectual when we don't have to be is a bit stigmatized in Australia. And that doesn't seem right to me, because if we want curiosity, we're going to need an environment that, that has the culture to catalyze it. Right? Like this one. Curiouser and curiouser, right? Anyways, um, yeah, so with all this talk about catalyst, I suppose I should actually get to you know, talking about why we actually use the word catalyst. Um, you know, you probably hear a lot about people saying, you know, stimulating uh, curiosity or, or triggering curiosity. But something we realize is that, you know, you, you really have to assume that you're going to spark curiosity and then just leave it alone and let it keep being curious, we realize that it actually doesn't really happen that way. You need to keep coming back to being curious. You need to keep reinforcing it. So that's why we're using the word catalyst. Now, we actually get the word catalyst from chemistry. And none of us are chemists, but I'm going to sort of um, put on my chemist hat, amateur chemist hat, and um, sort of explain to you why we use the word catalyst. Now, in chemistry, we've got, um, the, there are a lot of times when you've got sort of reactions that want to happen between two elements, but it doesn't quite happen without a third element, and that's called a catalyst. Um, but the moment you take away the catalyst, it goes back to not reacting again. Right? So that's very similar to what we've got here. You know, we've got a product that we want, which is curiosity, and we've got sort of ingredients, which are students. Right? And then we want something to happen, happen to produce curiosity. Now, the, uh, the um, unraveling complexity course that I was doing before, um, it, was a, it was a great catalyst. It was a very, very engaging catalyst. But, like I said before, the moment you walk out of the classroom, i.e. remove the catalyst, you know, the reaction stops, right? So we decided that ANU needed something that, like USP in Singapore, produced well, used the power of a cross-disciplinary community to catalyze curiosity among students that's available all the time. And that's when we went up to our vice chancellor at ANU and proposed the idea of an ANU Cross-Disciplinary Students Academy, XSA. And we're basically, um, we're, we're mostly just focused on a room, which is it's all about being curious. You go in the, you go in the room, and that's, that's what you're there for. You're, you're there to share ideas. You're there to discuss. You're there to, you know, everything. We've got walls we, that are sort of, well, of course, you've got walls. You've got walls that are, <laughs> we've got walls that are made for writing, and we've got a whole wall that's a camp, uh, that's a whiteboard. It's the biggest whiteboard on campus. I have to say that. Um, and we've got, you know, chalkboard, and we've got butcher's paper and everything. But, most importantly, we've got a sign on the door that says, you're here to be open-minded. You're here to talk to people. You're here to, you're here to broaden your mind and listen to people who have completely different perspectives from you. And that's our catalyst for curiosity at ANU. Now, so, so if there's one thing to take away from our talk, it'd be this. Curiosity doesn't just happen by itself. It needs to be catalyzed. And at university, one way to do that is through a cross-disciplinary community. But of course, Curiosity isn't just needed at university. I mean, we need curiosity out in society, or we're never going to be able to come up with the creative solutions that we need to solve the kind of problems that you're hearing about today. And even more, society needs to be curious enough to be open-minded about the radical solutions that are going to come up to these problems. But we also think that the idea of a cross-disciplinary community can be transposed out of the context of the university of disciplines and applied in whatever you guys are all doing with your lives now. That's because in our opinion, being cross-disciplinary isn't actually about disciplines. It isn't about what knowledge you have, how many PhDs you've got. It's much more an attitude. It's an attitude of being interested in what other people know, different to you. And it's actually the same attitude as being cross-cultural, 
or across professional, or across anything, really. Fundamentally, we think the principle underlying being cross-disciplinary is this, the principle of taking an interest in other people's perspectives. You know, not just being so caught up in our own one way of seeing, seeing the world, or even trying to pack everything into our own one way of seeing things, but just being curious about how other people see the world. And that is what is needed to catalyze curiosity. So we wanted to put this idea into practice. And the way we did that was by, by taking the cross-disciplinary spirit and trying to use it to create a global network of students who all think in this way, a global cross-disciplinary tournament, and, <laughs> or GXT. And this actually just finished last week. It's, it's been a crazy week. Just yesterday. <clears throat> what, what, we, what we tried to do, with a whole bunch of other students as well, it's not, a, it's not just us, and a lot of them are here in the audience now, is nine students from the National University of Singapore, the USP there, were matched in cross-university, cross-disciplinary teams with nine students from the Australian National University. These teams worked together with virtual, uh, through virtual communication for, for a matter of weeks. Then the Singaporeans all came over to ANU, and we had this really intensive residential week on campus. Each of the teams was t uh, faced with this challenge, propose an idea that can change the future of education. And the ideas were amazing. I'm not going to tell you about them, because, in fact, the winning team, thanks to Steve, is right here in the audience today, up there. And you <laughs> and you can go and talk to them yourselves in the break about their vision for the future of education. It's awesome, but uh, yeah, I'll give you one hint. It's, it's about trust. So, the other reason I want to mention them is because, in a lot of ways, we should be thanking them. It's, this is not our talk that we're giving, but it's the talk inspired by all the amazing ideas that came out through this meeting of minds at ANU over the past, over the past month. It's been all about curiosity, why it matters, and particularly at university. About the fact that curiosity needs to be catalyzed, it doesn't just happen, it only happens in certain environments. That one such environment at university is a cross-disciplinary community, because it makes us see the big picture and be more open-minded in our discussions. But also, that this idea can be extended far beyond university, into our lives as we move out into the world, because the real catalyst that is needed for, for curiosity is a community about taking an interest in other people's perspectives. So that's the challenge. We're going to be leaving university at the end of next year, and we're going to be looking for something. We're going to be looking for the kinds of companies, governments, communities, society that can catalyze our curiosity. If we can do that, everyone will be more creative, and we'll get more cool stuff. <laughs> like iPhones and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> But most of all, if we can catalyze our curiosity, then life will be so much more exciting, meaningful, and fun. And hey, we're at TED, right? TED is a really great community that catalyzes curiosity. And we're here to celebrate curious people, and that's like everyone here, right? So let's go and celebrate. <laughs>